I get a message from Neil asking, how do I laser brass? And I didn't know. And As so you I do. <laughs> and so I went and did some research and I found out and I'm here to show you. So with the Glowforge, Glowforge laser essentially is reflected by the brass material. There isn't enough there for the laser to be absorbed by Got in order it. to do what you need to do. That makes sense. And so that's where something like this comes in. This is called a laser marking spray and it's from Surmark. And I got it on Amazon like we get everything, right? Nice. What this does is it creates a coating on any material. So whether it be brass or other metals or glass or mm. ceramics or whatever, the laser then interacts with this spray and then that spray becomes etched onto the metal. Nice. And then the rest of it just washes away with water That's and you're left with something that looks really cool. Fantastic. How would it work? For something like this, yeah. uh, you wanna make sure you have the right settings, especially on a Glowforge or, or any other low power laser or CO2 laser. Like um, there are some inexpensive lasers from China that people get, or there are 3D printers that have laser attachments. Okay. So this actually applies to all of those as well because they're a lower power laser. And for that, what you wanna do is create a grid. So yeah, essentially- I was gonna say, there's not really a Glowforge brass <laughs> preset, not. right? I checked, nice. I checked and it's not there. What you want to do is create a grid. So you have you have speed, meaning the speed of the head. Mm -hmm. You have power, meaning the power of the laser from mm -hmm. like zero to 100, zero to 1000, whatever, whatever the, the range is. Then you have something called lines per inch. So if you think about it, the laser going back and forth, however many lines the laser makes per inch mm. is a detail level. The more lines per inch, the more detail you can kind of fit into it. Got it. So what we do is we create that grid where we have these different settings and we laser them onto the material. Nice. And then you take a look and see which one looks the best and then you pick it. Personal preference. Essentially personal preference. Okay. What's really great about this, and I think this is what you're gonna find the most fascinating, is what looks the best to you might not be what other people looks the best or mm. vice versa because a laser, like a 3D printer, is just a tool and a laser marking spray is another tool that helps you better use this tool. Love it's, it. it's really neat. I can't wait to show you. So, Let's you ready it. to laser a grid? I can't wait. Let's do it. Oh, that is cool. The laser grid is done, and we actually have a good result here. Yeah, this is fantastic. Can you see it? Should we use this? <laughs> All right, now explain it. You see it. Magic. Got it. So here, we actually can see it under magnification. What we've done on this grid is we have a power number, a speed number, and a lines per inch number. Smart. And we varied those for these three lines, just to give you an idea. So that top line, 750 speed, way too fast, unless that's a look you're going for. The bottom one is the standard 225 lines per inch. And right above that, I went a little bit higher at 340 lines per inch. And that, that kind of looks the best one to me this as is, far as clarity. This is why you're smart. Because I would have just printed the same sentence and then done it and tried to remember in my head which was which and then just looked and have forgotten which <laughs> one was the right one. You now have um, a swatch of material with settings that you can yep. save now in your project center. Perfect. All right, so we're gonna go with 100P. That's power. 250S. That's speed. 340 LPI. Lines per inch. Yeah. That looks to be our settings. Yeah. And we'll be able to do the really nice longer brass pieces for the frames with that setting and we'll see how they look. What do you say? I can't wait, let's do it. Let's do it. There you go, that's done. That was riveting. If something isn't right, we can just Ooh, wash and start again. And then the test would be perfect. In that world. Yeah, let's set it in. Uh, right, here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, that was my cue. All right. Yeah, for your second one, you're, you're like good at this now. My spray painting skills, and it's done and done. Yeah, go ahead and take it out. 
So there's one. Fantastic. All right, the second one. The second one goes in. Make sure it's level. It's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. Look at that, both of them, done. How do you like it? I think they're great, but they're a little dark. What's well, the yeah. next step? Next step for this Surmark spray is you just run it under water. It just washes off with water. Can we take it upstairs? What are we waiting for? Right, well, let's go. How cool is that? That's great. Nice. Look at that. Dude, dude, look at that. That's great. All right. So the next thing is just uh, put them on the frame. And finally, the reveal. This is what it was all about. Lasering brass on a Glowforge using that Surmark spray. So Neil, what do you think? Did you learn enough today as so you could do more brass nameplates for the various other frames you have? I did, you answered my question perfectly. I didn't know anything about the spray. The spray is infinitely helpful. I have lots of portraits that I want to make fictitious names under. I have big sheets of brass and the, the crimped cutters to cut them. And now with this, I have like 15 other jobs to do. That's so cool. <laughs> well, obviously reach out if you have any other questions, because I love learning along the way. And I hope you learned something as well. Uh, and as always, if you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. And as always, hope. High five. <laughs>